Peter Schiff Show. Welcome back. This is Peter Schiff here at SchiffRadio.com here on the radio row of the Exhibit Center, Exhibit Hall at CPAC. And joining the show now is yet another Republican candidate for the United States Senate, Richard Murdoch, who is involved in a primary with the incumbent Republican Senator Dick Luger. Uh, from Indiana. I know Dick Luger at Ruger has been around, how many years has he been in Senate? He's been in the United States Senate since 1977, 36 years. 36, that's a long time not to have a real job. Well, in, in Indiana, we like to make the point that uh, when he began his run for the U.S. Senate, uh, Peyton Manning was but a gleam in Archie's eye, so it's yeah. been a long time. And of course, when he was elected, the United States was still the world's largest creditor nation. Uh, we had a huge trade surplus. Uh, you know, we, we the fundamentals were still sound. Uh, they were beginning to deteriorate, but we still had a very sound economy. So he was he played an integral role, role in destroying our economy. Exactly. This is a historic moment. You know, just in the last six months, we've had our credit rating downgraded for the first time ever. We've seen a 10-year yield on the Treasury bill at 1.7%, the lowest rate in all of American history. And we now see for the first time in peacetime, mm -hmm. our national debt is equal mm -hmm. to the gross domestic product. Yeah, and of course, moment. the gross domestic product is overly inflated by statisticians using hedonics, and it's all fluff anyway, it's all consumption. So if you look at our debt as a percentage of manufacturing, for example, I mean, it is off the charts. Plus, if, if you look at, um, um, what were the other statistics you threw out? I don't know where the... Um, well, I mentioned the GDP, the interest rates. Yeah, interest rates, even though interest rates are a nominal low, if you adjust for inflation, they're even lower. Exactly. Because the rate of inflation is higher than what the government admits, but even if you take their own CPI, these are the highest negative rates we've ever had. And yes, S&P lowered our credit rating, but the truth is they didn't lower it far enough. We're junk. Yeah, <laughs> and, and you know, it's so ironic because everyone, when the credit rating was lowered, we all agreed, I certainly said, this was gonna cause the cost of government borrowing to go up. But in fact, it's gone down, and that's in large part just because of the way the manipulation's taken place. Well, that's because that's because the Fed is acting exactly. as the enabler, and not just the U.S. central bank, but he's getting cooperation from foreign central banks. Everybody is buying up dollars in U.S. Treasuries, and that is sparing us of the consequence of our profligacy. But it's lulling us into a false sense of security. Instead of the market disciplining the government and forcing spending cuts because rates are rising, rates are being held artificially low, so we borrow even more, and all we're doing is setting ourselves up for a massive disaster that's much worse than 2008. And when it happens, everyone's going to say, nobody could have seen it coming, and of course, it was obvious. You're exactly right. And, right. and I know this is radio. It's hard to use a visual aid, but I carry this in my pocket. Yeah, you've got a Zimbabwe $100 trillion bill, uh, which w very w well one day might say the United States on it. We can have a picture of Ben Bernanke on there instead of, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, George Washington or Ben Franklin. It was a hundred, And it could be, you know, one of our trillion dollar bills. It, exactly. This $100 trillion note of Zimbabwe is worth about $5.60. The official currency in Zimbabwe now... Well, it's the U.S. dollar. It's probably only worth $5 as a collector's item. Exactly. I don't know if anybody yeah. would actually <laughs> give you anything for it. But here's an interesting statistic. I forget the exact date, but when Dick Luger was first elected to the U.S. Senate, the Zimbabwe dollar and the U.S. dollar were at parity. Mm -hmm. So if you had a $100 trillion Zimbabwe dollar bill in your hand when Dick Luger was elected president, you would have been the richest man in the world, and it wouldn't even be close. $100 trillion U.S. dollars. Imagine destroying. I mean, this probably was the equivalent of all the purchasing power in the entire world, world. that I'm holding in my hand destroyed, yeah. destroyed by a printing press. We've got the same press, we the do. same technology. Yeah. This is what happens when you try to spend your way to prosperity and you destroy your credit rating on the way and it's a dangerous thing we are doing and if they're using the US dollar today after destroying theirs it begs the question whose currency will we use if we destroy our own well 
gold. We'll probably use nobodies. And, you know, that that's why, you know, I don't know if Indiana is one of the states that's trying to look into starting to coin money now, like the Constitution says, gold and silver. The federal government's not doing it. Maybe the states will. The legislature has had that up. I don't know that it came out of committee, but they were talking about whether or not the, the treasurer of Indiana could accept gold as mm -hmm. currency and as accept gold for payment, which right now I'm not allowed to do. But Yeah, I mean, because we know, I mean, the U.S. Constitution says that states can only make gold and silver legal tender and uh, there is no gold and silver. The federal government is supposed to coin money, which is gold and silver, because if they coin anything else, it's not legal tender. Right. And they're not doing that. You know, all they're doing now is running this script off of a printing press, and it's the same technology, it's the same thing they're doing in Zimbabwe. It is unconstitutional. It's unconstitutional for a reason. The founding fathers lived through the continental, and there that's where the expression not worth a continental, pretty soon it's going to be not worth a Federal Reserve note.